Netflix is being sued in Egypt for their overt blackwashing of Egyptian history by casting Queen Cleopatra, the last ruler of the Ptolemaic dynasty, as a black African queen, and in turn therefore making Egypt into a black African kingdom, something that both historians and Egyptians are apparently not particularly um, happy to accept as it turns out. The lawyer in question, Mahmoud al-Samari, alleges that uh, Netflix is not exactly compatible with modern-day Egyptian and Islamic values, which you're going to have a hard time disproving, frankly, and demands that, quote, in order to preserve the Egyptian national and cultural identity among Egyptians all over the world and take pride in it and to consolidate the spirit of belonging to the homeland, and accordingly, we ask and seek you to take the necessary legal measures against this platform, end quote. In essence, what he is demanding is that the nation of Egypt ban and block the Netflix documentary from ever being shown in Egypt, as it is a falsification of Egyptian history. And again, you're going to have a hard time proving him wrong in that particular regard. So, we did talk about the whole nonsensical race swapping of Cleopatra in a previous video just a couple days ago. So today, I want to delve a little bit more into the reason why we are here, why this is even a thing, why Cleopatra as a black character was even something that somebody at Netflix thought up in their silly little heads and went, okay, we're not going to tell the actual historical story, we are going to tell her truth as seen from the perspective of a racial ideologue. <laughs> because, of course, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. You don't randomly start to sw race swap characters left, right and centre like Netflix does without a larger reason and a rationale. And again, as the Sir the Lawyer uh, points out, the reason is Afrocentrism. Now, Afrocentrism started out as not all that bonkers of an idea. It started out with the idea that, okay, we African Americans, not we, the royal we here, incidentally, as you can probably see, <laughs> all of our uh, knowledge, our point of view, etc., is very Eurocentric because we have been raised in what was essentially America, a Western nation. And so they figured, okay, let's try and switch that lens over to more of an African centralized one to see if that changed anything from our perspective. Okay, legitimate point of view. But then it turned into what it is today, the completely ridiculous notion <laughs> that Africa once was some sort of stellar kingdom. <laughs> now, granted, um, was the Syria star system home to the Dogan African tribe <laughs> is, <laughs> is one of the more out there theories, even amongst Afrocentrism. But it has essentially turned into a, a racial ideologue movement where everything good that ever existed came from Africa, and everything bad that ever existed came from outside of Africa, and was somehow imposed upon the vastly technologically superior African people. It is quite the thing. But this in and of itself doesn't explain how we got here. Because if a tiny fringe group of people think that the Earth is flat, that doesn't mean that Netflix is going to make a documentary about it. Unless they already have, in which case I'm going to look mildly stupid right now. At the very least, they won't take their point of view quite so seriously. No. The reason why we are here is because of stuff like this. It is because America, for better or worse, the cultural hegemon of the current world, has been completely and utterly culturally dominated by this idea to the extreme. Now, not necessarily Afrocentrism, but more like minority fetishism is perhaps what I'd like to call it, where you've got Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, taking the knee. A sign of submission, of course, and apologizing for slavery, the whole George Floyd shooting, St. Floyd, etc., which originally took part, of course, as the kneeling against racism and so on and so on. This has also gone... You have several examples. You have police officers, for example, washing the feet of black activist leaders to apologize for racism and slavery. Because apparently, uh, police officers today in, I think, California or something, were heavily invested in the slave business a few hundred years ago. Alright. Well, I mean, it's nice of you to own up to it, I do suppose. And 
like the the biggest one the, the one that probably hits the hardest because like this seems pretty ridiculous nancy pelosi kneeling down on some political stunt okay fair enough but the true like the true like just punch of this is the relatively recent lizzo plays james madison's 200 year old crystal flute now this, in some ways, is a little bit of a nothing burger, isn't it? Okay, so Lizzo is a trained classical flutist. And so the, um, the National Archive or whatever it was, uh, Library of Congress, there you go, figures like, okay, we've got this ancient-ass flute. It's one of very few flutes in existence. They only made about 200 of them of these things, and America only has like 17-odd, I believe. And we want to see what it sounds like. So we're going to invite somebody sort of pseudo-famous to play it as a little bit of PR stunt as well. Okay, cool. But then some stuff happened. And this is by far the more flattering of the presentations, as she also played it at the Library of Congress for a bit. And this isn't too bad. She's clearly skilled as well. I'm not going to play the audio because I know what's going to happen. But she does a pretty damn good job of it. Now, and this one here too. She's clearly showed up and she's she's got a get up on that at least doesn't make it painfully obvious that she's not supposed to be there. Now, she could have chosen a shirt just a tiny bit larger to, you know, <laughs> finish off the illusion, quote unquote, but... She elected not to. But again, like this, okay, fair enough. A little bit of a PR stunt for the Library of Congress. You know, for her as well, obviously. Not, not too bad. But then, of course, there was this. <sighs> then, there was this. Where she played the flute at a concert of hers in DC and elected to start shaking her ass on stage before raising the flute in a bit of a victory gesture. So, this is what kind of reached into the back of everyone's lizard brain and activated those neurons. Because there, there, there was an instinctual revulsion against this. There was an instinctual dislike of what was going on. So, what was it? Again, she is a talented flutist. If you go and check up the uh, the little part which she plays in the Library of Congress, she clearly knows what she's doing, so it's not that she's bad at it, but, oh, first of all, who is Lizzo? Well, she is the creator of such classical musical marvels as Lizzo Bangers, or far more highbrow again, Lizzo Big Girl, Small world. <laughs> she is um a, a pop singer rapist type of thing, apparently, who was mostly known for, well, this whole little stunt here. So, okay. And then let, let's look at the other thing. Let's look at the crystal flute itself, right? So this one was created in the 1800s by a master craftsman who made these flutes out of crystal and quartz and other things specifically, uniquely, only because he wanted to make a slightly better flute. That was it. These were handcrafted by a master of his arts simply to make a flute that performed slightly better in all sorts of environmental conditions, as that is the primary advantage of a glass or crystal flute over a wooden or ivory one. It isn't as affected by heat or moisture, etc. That's about it. Then, it was shipped over the Atlantic in 1814, I believe, or something like that, for um, uh, James Madison's inauguration. A gift to a president. Like, this is a masterpiece made to play the finest of music. The, the, the stuff created by the ancient masters of Europe for only the most solemn of occasions. And here... It is being played by a fat woman shaking her ass in the most obscene lowbrow gesture you can imagine on stage whilst wearing see-through underwear. <laughs> and again, it's, it's the twerking. That's what really hits us. Because what is the twerk by comparison? The twerk is the most studiedly lowbrow, barbaric, 
barbaric and vulgar thing imaginable. There is no artistry there, there is no high skill, there is no ballet or dance or intricacies. It is squatting down and vibrating your ass. <laughs> and again, you contrast that to this priceless historical artifact. And even the most base, lowborn of peasantry will look at this and go, there's something very, very wrong with this. Because there is. Like, this is, unironically, what absolute cultural conquest looks like. And that, in turn, of course, will lead to, amongst other things, shit like this. Where a Viking Jarl is depicted as a black woman. A strong black woman as well. A natural leader of Viking society who could really bring those silly barbaric Vikings together. <laughs> under her inspired rule. This is not something that just naturally happens. Again, this is an absurdity. This is something that is inherently ridiculous. Nobody will think, oh, right, a Viking Jarl, a black woman. Just like nobody will think, oh, or something like, um, let me see here, like, like this, Michael B. Jordan, Kyle Rittenhouse. Now this one is a joke, but the problem is, they work, don't they? You see Netflix, Idris Elba has Solinsky, and you think to yourself, yeah, yeah, it could happen. Absolutely could happen, because it practically does happen. Now, to be fair, this is England. Britain, almost as dominated as America, with, you know, 18th century or previous royalty and high nobility, with skin colours, varieties aplenty. Imagine if this was the other way around. And imagine the outcry. In fact, we don't need to imagine the outcry. Because the person apparently, supposedly originally cast for the role of Cleopatra was Gal Gadot. And she was ousted from the role because she was the wrong colour. Imagine that. Now, to be fair, I imagine that the Egyptians might have something to say about an Israeli playing their queen as well. <laughs> You know, just because the two countries have a little bitty witty bitty bitty itty bitty thing of a history going on. <laughs> Quite recent history as well, but details, details and all that. <sighs> this is why this can happen. This is why it is going to happen until we begin to move away from our currently hyper-racialized worldview and hopefully back to the relative centralized system or more centrism of like the early 2000s, the late 90s, where there was actually a, a genuine lack. Like people looked at like Will Smith, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, for example. Originally, that was intended to be a black kid, Fresh Prince, you know, Will Smith, coming to live with a rich upper-class white family in Berlin. Because that was the thing at the time, it's kind of a fish-out-of-water style scenario. But they thought to themselves, okay, everybody's doing that, so why don't we just actually go all out and make it a black family and get really you know, take the joke all the way by making this really posh upper-class black family. And that was a genuine piece of representation because it didn't really exist at the time. But it was that representation. It broke through the metaphorical glass ceiling and has now created the modern day where we met that point, we hit it, we achieved the representation, and then we just whoosh, off into the future. Whereupon we arrive again at this, and again at this, and again at this, and again at Queen Cleopatra being a strong black African leader created by Netflix. And I'm very glad we actually are seeing the outrage like this, because if nothing else, it will send a signal to the corporate suits at Netflix that the tides have, after 20 odd plus years, finally begun to turn, and people really just want the good old fashioned entertainment back again. And if you're going to make a heavy quotation marks documentary, you might be better off, you know, reflecting history. At least that way, you're not going to be sued for overtly falsifying it. Just a thought, Netflix, just something to consider. 
Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.